Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the fourth and final preseason race of the IESC GT Series. We're coming here at Daytona International Speedway, which not only serves as our final preseason event for the series, it's also going to, in about two weeks' time, serve as the first actual points-paying race for the series. I'm in St. Lear 13, and I'm glad to have you here with us. Now, first up, going into this event, one very important thing has to be taken into consideration. This circuit is not like the last ones we've gone to. It's not like Bathurst. It's not like Lime Rock. It's not like Catalonia. We have a whole lot of very tight technical sections. No, the vast majority of the circuit here is extremely, extremely wide open and fast. Speed is king around this circuit. Not only that, but when it comes down to it, you need to be able to make your moves and make those moves fast, especially if you're in one of the slower cars such as the Ford GTs. Today we're seeing some drivers try out alternate vehicles just for today to see if maybe they want to go ahead and forego their more comfortable rides for something a little bit faster during the actual season. Daytona is not the only speed focused track on the set schedule. There's also Road America that comes later on, the double points paying event, Le Mans, Nürburgring Nordschleife could be considered a speed track depending on the way you set the vehicle up. Also, in addition, we have one of the largest initial car counts that we may have. And why is Sage Zangri in here? We have one of the largest potential fields that we've had in a long time. We've seen return of drivers from the last season that we've been waiting on for a while. Yunvon 101 running in a Lamborghini Super Trofeo. We also have Icy Jack in a Chevy ZR1. We also continue to see new drivers run here with the bearded guy 95 continuing to drive in the bmw kazubelli also in the bmw and foxy gaming in who has now swapped over to a nismo instead of a mercedes for today's event so it's going to be extremely interesting to see what exactly we're going to be looking at here i sadly i was not here when qualifying went down so i honestly can't tell you exactly what the qualifying lineup is going to look like However, I will say this much. So we have a very wide variety. Oh, well, we're loading in already. Sweet. <laughs> so it's going to be Dragon's X Ferrari and Foxy Gaming sharing the front row with Excursor Road and Drift King in row two. Rock Murrow and Kazubelli will have row three. TJ and Ferrari Bros row four. Lucas Speed and Bearded Guy row five. Yunbon 101 and PM221 row six. Dino Prime and Icy Jack row seven. And that will. Coco Gamer 11 is going to be running the pace car in an event door from 2016. That's just going to go out there, complete the pace lap, and then like what we saw at Bathurst, he'll pull down to the pit lane, and his event will end there. So we're looking at 14 drivers in today's race, assuming that no one lags out before we get to the green flag. Last season when we did the preseason event at Daytona, it was uh, a bit problematic as we end up having roughly a 30-minute delay on the initial pace lap followed by another 20 or so minute delay about on roughly lap 3 due to lag issues with the party. However, it's believed that's not going to be an issue today. Go ahead and rip the map off. We're following our pole setter, Dragger's X Ferrari, in that B big boy BMW. I swept that the time intervals. This will also be the first race in which we'll see penalties being actually handed out. Up to this point, there have been warnings, but it has been announced in pre in pre drivers meeting that today will be the first time we'll see penalties handed out for drivers running excessive, running excessively aggressive, or doing in general stupid stuff. And one very, very notable new change to the series has been the addition of a penalty box on what is the backstretch of the oval. Coming out of Speedway Turn 2, all the way close to the inside wall, there is a one single yellow stripe that runs perpendicular to the track. If drivers are deemed that they must give a penalty, they will have to pull off the circuit and drop by, right by, or right behind that line for a specified amount of time before they are allowed to continue running on the circuit. Also, it's been announced in the driver's meeting that although Daytona is a nice wide track, it's very, very much important that a driver does not make more than two moves to block per straightaway. 
if they do so, they will get a potential of two grid posi two grid positions lost at the end of their race. For instance, driver finished second, but he blocked more than twice on a straightaway. It means that he could very well end up finishing fourth. Granted, that may mean that there's not going to be much of an incentive to avoid blocking if you're in the back of the field, but it is something to consider when you look closer up to the front. BMW shares the front row with the Nismo. Highest that we've ever seen a Nismo run in these series. Then you have Mercedes-Benz in third. Drift King, who is a two-time Daytona champion on the Oval running in NASCAR, is back in that Lamborghini that brought him a, La a Monza victory last season and also helped him wrap up the Lone Wolf Cup last season. Fifth place is another Lamborghini. I said fifth place. Game. Thank you. Then along with Rockmaro, you have TJ111. He is, if the camera angle would change just a bit so I could actually see it. Okay, never mind. Looks like we're about to go green anyway right now. Okay, so TJ's in the Chevy, then Ferrari Boss and 4 GTs right beside him. You got Lucas Speed, then several BMWs behind him. Alright. Oh, damn it, I missed the start. Alright, so Field now heads down into turn one, and it looks like it looks like that Nismo is going to end up running a little wide, extremely wide. It's going to be on the outside of a three-way battle. Kazu Belli and that BMW is going to jump all the way up into third. Now all the way up into a battle for a second. He's going to run wide, though. End up through the dirt. And it looks like Foxy Gaming is already fighting back. But he's going to have to get by Exclusive And he's going to have to get by him fast. Kazu Belli, Ferrari boss. Already side by side a little bit further back there. They're around that slight bend in the infield section. Foxy Gaming makes a little bit of contact with Kazubelli. It looks like his ghost row has a little bit of a wheel slide in the back there. Here comes that Ford GT at Ferrari boss. He showed a lot of potential at Lime Rock, putting down some of the fastest laps all race. He's already cracked the top six, but he's going to actually, he's up to fourth now, but he's going to have to make sure he doesn't lose too much time on the straightaways, considering we know those Ford GTs, very draggy, low horsepower cars compared to the rivals here. And he's been caught on the outside line. That does not spell well for him. As we look back at Ferrari Boss real quickly here. As they come out of Speedway Turn 2. And it looks like he's going to get overtaken by the BMW of the bearded guy. Rockmaro gets a little sideways out behind him. Ferrari Boss is going to fight back coming out. Of that bus stop chicane, he really seems to be confident in making moves on the circuit. But again, he gets caught on the outside with really no moves that he can potentially make, considering he just does not have as much horsepower in that thing as you typically would expect. Meanwhile, I look back at Foxy Gaming, who's won all three prior preseason races, but missed out on pole here, something that he took in all the other events. And now he's currently right in the third position. Runs a little bit wide coming out of turn one. That's another change that was announced in the driver's meeting. And, and Dragon's X Ferrari seems to have slid off circuit. And that's going to end up giving the top spot to Exclusive now. So Dragon's X Ferrari is now going to be the driver who has to hold off Foxy Gaming here. As I round that first interior hairpin. And we are getting word that the safety car is being deployed. Potentially for an instant for the back in the field now. So everyone will line up in single file. They'll circle around and make sure they can complete this lap. So, a lead, our first lead changes of the day have happened as our pole sitter was Drag's X Ferrari. Oh, Drag's X Ferrari seems to have been given the lead back, actually. But we did see on track Drag's X Ferrari slide wide, and Exclusive ended up going up into that top spot. But also, I want to go ahead and point out Yun Von here. He has already moved up into the fourth position despite starting well back in the back of the field here. So, very, very smooth moves. Yun Von, who 
was a very strong contender in the Daytona race here last season, but got wrecked out on the restart with two laps to go. And this is between himself, ludicrous speed, and drift shots, who was not running in this season. He may actually have things going in his favor now. But Yunvon's not running that BMW. We're used to seeing him run. He's one of those drivers who have swapped over to a Lamborghini, expecting that that pure speed will give him an advantage on the straightaways here. As you remember, last season, PZ French for man dominated, led all the first two-thirds of the race outright, pitted late, ended up having to work his way back up, took the lead on that final restart in route to his first and only victory in the series before pulling out a few races later. Then in fifth position back there, you have a car that you would nor typically associate with Yunvon. That's Kazu Belli driving a BMW right now. And ver that very, <laughs> very colorful, if not a little bit schizophrenic-looking BMW. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Kazubelli, one of the newcomers to the series, did not run last season. But he's been showing some good potential thus far at Lime Rock. And now Daytona, a much different sort of circuit. Seeing potential, maybe not necessarily the championship material right off the bat. It's still kind of early to decide that. But potential podium, maybe even a win if he's lucky. But we're going to look up to the front as Dragon's x is going to lead them down to the green flag here. It will be lap three, re realistically lap four on the counter, but first lap doesn't count because that was under pace conditions. And we're down, going down to turn one right now. Excolstro runs his car really wide. Drags X Ferrari seems to lose a lot of speed in the center of the corner. That lets Excolstro pull right up to him. You can see tires being thrown all over the track farther back there. And it looks like Yunvon 101 is now going to be the driver to make the move on Foxy Gaming. So Foxy is showing a lot more weakness today than what we are typical, what we typically see from him. And Yunvon has now worked his way up into the third position. And it's going to be up to him to see if he can get around Excolsero here. And now Kazubelli is going to go neck and neck with Foxy Gaming. For that fourth spot, TJ is back there in six. He's ready to pick up the pieces if that battle ends up falling apart. Yunvon has caught right up to Excolstro, and Excolstro washes up the circuit. Coming on to the straightaway, he's going to go ahead, get back down to the inside line. Yunvon's going to stay in his draft. He has more speed. But running up there on the banking is just simply the longer way around the circuit for something like Daytona, which is just pure oval. That's not really much of an issue because the speed difference is could actually be a positive if you know what you're doing with the run. Here, GT cars, a little bit slower. It's not preferred to try and make them move on the outside. It's possible, but not necessarily preferred. Nick Skolsero seems to have his car set up a little bit better in that bus stop chicane. We've seen that gap open up just a little bit between second and third. Still watching Yunvon, who's worked his way into third position. That gap's really opened up now between second and third. But now they're gonna head under braking. This is gonna be real test, and woo! Both second and third place get sideways. Yunvon is still spitting smoke. Skolsro ends up going through the dirt. He got body slammed by Yunvon, but give the position to that Lamborghini. Meanwhile, a little farther back, Kazubelli has now lost that battle with Foxy Gaming. And both of them have closed right up onto Excosro for the moment. It's going to be interesting to see if Excosro is going to be able... And Dragon's X Ferrari looks like he may have gone off circuit because we saw a lot of smoke coming out of that car just out of the back of it there. And we can see smoke again. I wonder if there may be something wrong with the handling for Dragger's machine, he may have taken out so much downforce that he just does not have that grip that he needs in that machine as Yunvon is now going to merge back onto the circuit. He's right there on the rear bumper of Dragger's X Ferrari. Now as they get onto the straightaway, we see that gap opening up just a little bit here. But Yunvon is right in the draft of the Britishman. Yunvon won his final start last season, which was the second to last race at Yas Marina, in a daring last lap, last corner pass. So both, the, and Drags X Ferrari won last season in a very wet race at Brandstad. So both these drivers familiar with victory lane. And Skullstro continues to hold off Foxy Gaming back there in third. And Kazubelli's actually started to drop off that battle just a bit. 
the top five in general just kind of pulling away. And we are under... It looks like we are back under the yellow flag here. We have not gotten word why we'd be under the yellow flag again. A little bit farther back, I looked to the back of the field, and regrettably, it's those four, it's the 4GT of our defamed champion, Ludicrous Speed. The preseason has not treated him well. It's not been terrible to him, but he definitely expected a lot more. He had a top five card, and he was able to sneak out a third place finish at Bathurst. Then at Catalonia, he was one of the faster cars all day, but it didn't matter because Foxy Gaming just had a better setup overall. So Ludacris Speed, although he finished second there, is a very distant second, had one of the stronger cars, if not the if not the second strongest car, maybe outside of his teammate at Lime Rock, but ended up involved in an incident with Foxy Gaming, wrecked, got dropped to the back of the field, and then lagged out before he could start making up significant ground. And then behind him, you can see Drift King, in that Lamborghini. It's kind of interesting seeing such a speed-focused car in the back of the field. Not really sure what's happened there. Also, then you look in 12th position, that's Dino Prime. Missed the Lime Rock event, so might hurt him a little bit in some of the more handling sections. Just not having that data, but... It'll be interesting to see if he might be able to improve. As everyone knows, Rebel Race, as those of you who do follow the series know, Rebel Racing has hired a new tuner in the form of Tactical Fallout. He's the one who's been building most of the cars for this series for Rebel Racing. And just in front of Dino Prime, you have Rock Morrow. Rock, who represents the Raven West team, which is split off from Rebel Racing. He's also in the Lamborghini. In front of him is Icy Jack. Icy Jack in another Chevy. Again, one of those from Rebel Racing, as we said. Ninth is PM221, and considering that Skolsaro and Drags X Ferrari, PM's teammates, are up at the front, seeing PM middled in, muddled in the midfield is extremely strange. In front of him is the BMW of that bearded guy. He's fallen to eighth right now, but with a good restart, he may be able to make up a few positions. If he positions himself properly, he's almost guaranteed to get by Ferrari Boss, considering that Ferrari Boss in 7th still running that 4 GT. He definitely has the handling he wants for the infield section, but there's so much focus on pure speed, it's hurting him. 6 is TTJ. He's wor very solid. He's the highest ranking Revent West driver right now. 5th, as we've already said, is Kazu Belli. And then it's Foxy, Excolsero, Yun Vaughn, and Draggers. And we're actually going to follow Yun Vaughn as the field comes down to the green flag here, let's see if our Yaz Marino winner from last season can overtake our Brand Hatch winner from last season. Yunvon had a very, very difficult season last year, lagging out of almost every event despite staying on the pole numerous times. You can see that Lamborghini getting extremely racy right on the rear bumper of that BMW. Put right on him. A little bit of tire smoke as they come out of the corner. And it looks like TJ is actually overtaking Kazubelli, or at least stayed ahead of Kazubelli there for the moment. And these two are already putting a little bit of a gap, but Yunbon ends up being the driver who runs wide. He's got a spin right in front of the field. Ferrari Boss ends up nailing him, and that's right in front of the entire field. Yunbon is still sideways. TJ is there. He's trying to see if he can capitalize. So they're still neck and neck between a Ford GT and a Lamborghini. With Chevys, BMWs, Lambos, almost every car manufacturer there is there three, almost four wide in the back of the field now. And you can see the pure speed that Lamborghini has. He goes right to the outside to get around that Ford GT. But very disappointing for Yunbon. But meanwhile, back up front, this means Drag's X Ferrari. He now has a massive gap over second place. And second place, speaking of which, is a nice little battle going on between Excolsero and Foxy Gaming. So it'll be interesting to see if Mercedes, the car that Foxy Gaming has won the last three events with, is it the car that's been giving Foxy those abilities, those wins, or is it just Foxy's innate natural talent which has given him those victories? Now Foxy is in a much different car here at Daytona. 
And it looks like Yun Von has already worked his way back up into the fourth position. A little bit farther back, TJ has slipped back to sixth position right now. And that Chevy GT. Oh, and Yun Von has gone off again. I wonder if there may be something wrong with that car. He might. It's so early, but I kind of wonder. Maybe he burned his tires off as we bring up telemetry. There's nothing to assume that his tires would be gone, but for some reason he seems to be locking up and sliding out in a lot of strange positions right now. Oh, and the bearded guy also pushing really wide farther back there to battle with Dino Prime. Dino is trying to work his way up to the field. There's Rock Marrow there as well. So BMW, Chevy, Lamborghini with another BMW right there. It's going to be neck and neck as they come out of the infield section. It's going to be almost four wide there. Kazu Belly gets pushed out of the way by Dino Prime. And Dino goes up in the seventh. There's still neck and neck back there. Wow! PM2 PM221 almost gets knocked into the wall. And we have four drivers all right in the line. And it's a 4 GT that's holding them all up. Rockmore in that Lamborghini is going to open the line beneath the 4 GT. And down that back straightaway, the bearded guy is going to lunge to the inside. He's going to overtake Lucas Speed, but he's not going to have good line going through there. That 4 GT is going to fight back. There's just not enough room for that 4 GT to get back there now. So the bearded guy is going to hold on to that 10th position for the moment. As they go through Speedway, turns 3 and 4. Drift King back there in 14th. Despite being a Lamborghini, he's not made up any spots yet. It's very strange indeed. Oh, and Icy Jack goes for a lunge on the bearded guy. They both make contact, and the bearded guy goes way off the circuit. That's perfectly legal in today's event, but that's going to cost both Icy and the bearded guys. Both of them are going to drop to the very back of the field. So an aggressive move ends up really upsetting him, and the bearded guy gets in the back of Drift King, and he's going to spin Drift King right there in the back of the field. They're going to get going again, and Icy Jack will take those positions back over. Meanwhile, as we look back up to the front of the field right now, well, not to the very front, but close to the front, Foxy Game and Excolstro still in a very intense battle. This time, Excolstro, though, is going to run wide as they come back on the speedway section here. So now Foxy moves back into the second position. Excolstro is closing right up. And that Mercedes-Benz, he's going to go look to the inside. Now, he put his car below the W.O. line. I'm not sure if that's legal or not in today's event, but he has enough speed that he was able to get right by Foxy on that straightaway, and he's going to maintain a relatively clean line going through the bus stop chicane there. So Foxy Gaming had the spot over Skullsero. But that's changing now, and then you go back to fourth place. That's Yun Von all, in, all by himself for the moment in that Lamborghini. Highest running Lamborghini right now on the track. Then fifth place is TJ. Oh, and we have a battle going on just a little bit farther back for seventh between Kazubelli and Dino Prime, BMW versus Chevy. That Chevy seems to be a lot more trimmed out in the straightaway. He's maintained, if not pulling away. And Ferrari Boss has got to make the move somehow. So it's turned from a two-way battle to a four-way battle under braking. Now Ferrari Boss, TJ, Dino Pime, Krasu Belly, all four of them just basically throw a blanket on top of them right now. As they go around that first infield hairpin, once again, Ferrari Boss is caught on the outside, but this is the infield section where the four GTs are the strongest. TJ, though, has dragged his Chevy up into the fourth position right now, and Kazu Belly is the one who ends up sliding off circuit this time. I honestly think a lot of these drivers have just gone so far trying to maximize straightaway speed that they took off a little bit too much downforce and it's hurting them in some of the higher speed corners that's not that's on the infield section, primarily that little bend between the two hairpins. Now this time Dino Prime ends up er entering the speedway section wide and it's going to put him under threat from Rock Morrow. As right now, Ferrari boss in that 4 GT is going to have to try and hold off Kazubelli's BMW. And again, the speed of the 4 GT, even though the engine program is there, the fact that, that machine just has so much drag keeps it from being able to do anything. Rockmaro in that Lamborghini 
is right there. It's going to be interesting if he is going to be able to make a move on any of the drivers ahead of him as we go through Speedway Turn 3 4. He actually seems to have dropped off just a little bit this time. But Dino Prime now move him up into the fifth position. Dino Prime raced off and on last season, had a very difficult season to say the least. He really only had one solid finish despite having a few races where he had respectable runs. His best finish was a fifth at Le Mans after nearly half the field took themselves out and took themselves out and seen car instance ahead of him. Dino Prime worked his way up in the fourth there but broke way too late. And now he's going to drop all the way back to six with Ferrari Boss right behind him. So five cars all on top of each other right now. Ferrari Boss seems to have that thing figured out a little bit better than anyone else. And we don't see him making no many mistakes as these other drivers. So we're going to go ahead, though, and ride it on board with Ferrari Boss. We're going to follow Ferrari Boss for a little bit, at least. to see if he's able to make a move on that Chevy GT. He's around that second hairpin here. He's going to look on the outside. Dial Prime has enough of a gap that he's able to slide in front of Ferrari Boss there. Again, Dial Prime exiting extremely wide when it comes to merging onto the speedway section. He's going to move right in front of Ferrari Boss without issue. Rockmar is going to do the exact same. The 4GT program just has so much drag, it really hurts them both here and to a lesser extent at Monza, which is another circuit that we'll be seeing a little later in the year. <laughs> Meanwhile, a little farther up, Kazu Belli continues his little spat with TJ, and now Dino Prime has caught both of them. So a nice little three-way battle forming here, and again, that Chevy GT that Dino Prime has, he's really got the thing trimmed out for just pure speed. He's looking to make it three wide. I don't know if there's enough room there. He's trying, though. He's looking. There's not enough room. We see somebody pit in the back there. That's Ferrari boss. He's going to pit back there in the eighth position now. There is one mandatory stop in this event. I'm going to guess Ferrari boss realized that he just does not have the speed necessary to keep up. But he was losing time either way, battling with these drivers. And that's why he decided to go ahead, pit now. He also must be pretty confident in the longevity of his tires, considering that we're only a little bit past one-third of this race complete here. Meanwhile, up at the front of the field, shouldn't surprise anyone, Foxy Gaming, despite having ditched the Mercedes-Benz, has now moved up into the first position. However, it's not like it was uh, it's not like he had to battle for it because Dragger's X Ferrari has done a nice sneaky little thing and he has already gone ahead and pitted. So Dragger's X Ferrari trying to play the lawn con dropped all the way back to 10th in the process despite having the pole winning car easily one of the faster cars on the track he seems to expect that everyone else up and have him they're all gonna have to pit at some point and as he they pit he'll just pick up the spots one at a time his biggest hope though it has to be that <coughs> excuse me that both his teammates Skolstro and our current leader Foxy don't put down so many fast laps that when they pit and come back up, they aren't going to lose enough a whole lot of time. And we see Drift King has a little bit of an issue with his Lamborghini going through the bus stop there. A little farther up, just two spots ahead of Draggers. We're looking at his teammate, PM221. PM was our biggest championship rival to Ludacris Speed all last season, taking the championship battle down to the last lap until... Not outright wrecking himself, but banging himself off a wall while leading at Nurburgring, which in turn gave Ludacris Speed the championship. So seeing him run in the midfield is really not something we're, t we're used to seeing him do. Then again, we look ahead. As T we're looking at TJ as he continues his spat with Rockmar right now. But ahead of them, though, I wanted to point this out. Dino Prime... Putting on one of the best showings he has in a long time. He's gotten by Kazubelli, although it's going to be interesting to see how long he'll be able to stay there. He's worked his way into the third position. But granted, that's more because the leaders have been pitting more than anything else. Dial Prime again taking an extremely wide line. Oh, a little bit too wide that time. And Dial Prime ends up going into the outside wall. 
So Kazu Belly moves into the top spot this time. Dino just trying to maximize speed wherever he can. I think he took a little bit too far merging onto the straightaway there. Now he is in the draft. He'll be able to get right into Kazu Belly's draft. And if he doesn't make too many mistakes, if any mistakes at all, going through the chicane, he got him. Kazu Belly got a little bit of wheel spin under braking. And that let Dino get right up onto his rear bumper, making very significant contact. But as we get back onto the straightaway at BMW, I wonder, it's going to be interesting to see who has the better program. Right now, Skullstro has taken over the lead as Foxy Gaming has pitted. No, I take that back. It's now Yun Vaughn who is our leader. So Yun Vaughn and that Lamborghini, despite making several mistakes earlier, he is now our leader. And Dino Prime moves his GT up into the second position. So, where did Foxy Gaming come out? Foxy has merged back onto the circuit in the 11th place, and he's going to be coming up on Excolcero really quickly. So, Foxy Gaming is able to overtake Excolcero after Excolcero merges back onto the circuit. It's going to take several turns for Excolcero to make sure his tires are warmed up. So, Foxy is going to be ahead of Excolcero, but compared to both of them, though, while Foxy is currently right there in the 9th position, Dragon's X Ferrari, the other driver that they were fighting for the lead, He's currently 7th right now. And there's clean track ahead of Draggers, so there's really no need for him to make a whole lot of mistakes. He just needs to make sure he's consistent enough that he doesn't end up losing time to the drivers behind him. Now, we look back at our leader, Jan Vaughn. The question is going to be, when is he going to pit? As we go ahead and bring up the telemetry and we see where his fuel and tires are at. He's currently at 54% fuel, but every driver... He, they have to pit in today's event, and it looks like we may have experienced a DNF from Icy Jack. If so, we'll try to get a little bit of a word from him. See if we can figure out what happened to Icy Jack that may have dropped him out of this event today. Yamaha's going to stay out another lap. We look back to second place now. Anyways, here into the booth as we continue to watch this battle between Dino Prime and Kazu Belly for second. We have Icy Jack. Icy, shame to talk to you so early. What happened? Okay, so... Uh, I don't know if you guys knew, but yesterday we had a pretty bad storm. It was like severe uh, thunderstorms. It was like flash flooding. And we had like hail storms. And apparently it was still affecting my internet, so... One after another, it was just a little bandwidth, high latency, and then boom, I just got snapped out of space and reality. Well, sounds like your loss from the field is not perfectly balanced, as all things should be. <laughs> I hate you. All right. But, All right, uh, so uh, overall, from what you did do in the race, though, how, um, what did you feel overall for your vehicle, and do you think you have a decent machine when it comes to the actual points paying race here at Daytona in two weeks. I feel like it's a good car. It's really fast. It's just I have to gain the mental capacity just to control it because if it goes one way, it's so hard to get it back to another way. Alright, well, anything else in general you want to share with us here? I know earlier we saw you make a huge lot. You worked your way up into about like fifth or sixth made a huge lunge on the bearded guy and then both you went off circuit and then you two ended up in a little spat with drift king do you want to expand on that at all um well from our perspective um from one of the bus stops incidents he just ran straight into someone and then i couldn't get i couldn't break in time because i was going 130 miles per hour so yeah and then alan ran up behind me pm and all that it was terrible but yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Icy Jack, for going ahead and joining us in the booth here as we continue to watch this very spirited battle for second place between Dino Prime and Kazu Belly. As we're down here on lap 15 of 30, so about halfway through today's event. So I imagine some of these drivers up front who haven't pit yet, they're going to start seriously considering to pit this lap. The impressive thing is that. Despite this battle, both Kazabelli and Dino have really not fallen that far off of Yunbon. I mean, yeah, this is a massive sec seven second gap, but it's been between about five and eight seconds 
between them and Yunvan. Base. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Please forgive me. It's been that gap for several laps now. I've not seen Yunvan pull a massive distance away. So I have to wonder if either Kazabelli or Dino had the stability to get away from each other. If maybe one of them could run down Yunvan on just pure single car pace alone. Anyways, our pole sitter, Dragon's X Ferrari, has now climbed his way up into the sixth position. So let's go ahead and we're going to start looking with our current leader. This is Yunvon. As we bring up the telemetry for his tires. So is he going to pit this lap? And yes, there's our answer. So our leader is going to pit this lap. He's going to split this race basically right in half. Second place is Kazu Belly and his little battle with Dino. And now Kazu Belly is going to pit. Out of second, but Dino Prime is going to be the driver to inherit the lead. So I know it's a non points paying race, but Dino Prime leads his first lap in IESC GT competition despite running all season long last year. Now he's all by himself. He's going to have to pit at some point, and those tires aren't getting any fresher. But maybe if the race stays green and he's fast enough, he might be hoping that he can open up a large enough gap on the rest of the field. That when he pits, he doesn't have to worry. Second place is Dragger's X Ferrari, who already has pitted. Dragger's is currently nine and a half seconds off of Dino. Then we have PM221. He's third. And PM has not pitted yet, and he's actually acting as a little bit of a barrier between Dragger's and Dragger's biggest rival on the circuit, Foxy Gaming. And as I say that, PM's going to go ahead and move aside. And I can't tell if he let Foxy Gaming by or if he just, fo if he just uh, had made a little mistake there. But Foxy, despite end up ending up on the losing battle on the pit road battle. Oh, and Foxy gets a little sideways in that Nismo. And PM follows him right along in that Viper. <laughs> oh, it's so fun watching these drivers fight these cars. So now PM's going to fall to fourth. He has yet to make his stop. And you have fifth place. That's Yunvon. He has made his stop. He's in fifth, so he's ahead of Excursoro, which is the interesting part. I have to wonder why Excursoro hasn't been able to keep up quite as well as we thought he would be able to. He's not too far off the back of Yunbon, but he's not really there. And we see him cut through the dirt there and get a little sideways. Now, meanwhile, we look back at our leader. Is Dino Prime going to pit this lap? No, he is not pitted this lap, so he's going to stay out another circuit. Draggers has that lead down to 9.1 seconds right now. But Dino Prime has to pit before the race is up. I'm sure he's just enjoying that time out there in the sun right now more than anything else. Anyways, looking back at Foxy Gaming. How, he has a 3.4 second gap between himself and Draggers. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can close that gap down it close that gap down at a reasonable pace. Now I'm going to look back at Kazu Belly. This is a driver who was fighting with Dino Prime. He's merged back onto the circuit in the sixth position. He was second when he pitted. He's got perfectly clean track all around him. It's a 7.3 second gap between him and Excolstero in front of him. And seventh back here is Rock Morrow. Rock, another one of the drivers who have Opted to jump into a Lamborghini for days of it. He's going to slide into the dirt right there. And he's going to end up running wide through the hairpin corner. And that's going to let the 4 GT at Ferrari Boss get by. So Ferrari Boss, oh, that, that 4 GT is even a little sideways. But we've seen that 4 GT just does not make nearly as many mistakes as most of the other drivers. But at the same time, it doesn't matter because he just doesn't have that pace and consistency. As we get onto the turns three, t speedway turns one and two here. We're going to see Rock Marlowe is going to do the same thing almost every Lamborghini and Chevrolet has done to the Fords. They just move right to the outside and go right by without any real issue whatsoever. The, the amount of aerodynamic drag on the Ford GT is absolutely ridiculous. And again, the Ford GT, nice, solid, doesn't really make too much of a mistake going through the bus stop chicane. And then just behind them, you have TJ. He's in the ninth position. Now, back up front, our leader is now Dragger's X Ferrari. 
So where is Dino Prime going to merge back onto the field? He was battling with... He's going to cut through the grasses a bit. He was battling with Kazubelli. And there is Kazubelli. Kazubelli is going to slot right back in front of Dino. So their little spat's going to continue now by the looks of it. If anything, Kazubelli may have actually opened up just a little bit on those fresher tires. So our leader is back to our being our pulse there, Dragon's X Ferrari. Dragger's had a good season last year, but not quite to the level he wanted. He only took a single win, and although he was a championship contender up until roughly the last three, two races of the season, he just never really had the outright pace to contend for victories race in, race out. It was more like he just kind of hung out in the top five, top six, and then would just luck out into maybe a fourth or fifth place finish when all was said and done. Definitely looking for a much stronger season this year. And win here in the preseason at Daytona would really help for that. Right now, he's put down the fastest lap of the event. But I don't think it's been that consistent because Foxy Gaming is whittling that gap down. It's about two seconds right now. Third place is Excursero. He has gotten by Yunvon. And I think he just has that Mercedes-Benz completely trimmed out in a straightaway. Because we're not seeing Yun Von be really able to pull pull up and make a move. In fact, if anything, the longer straightaways goes, he actually makes more gains on that Lamborghini than anyone else. It's possible that Excolstro and that Mercedes has more straightaway speed than anyone else. And again, Yun Von locking, sliding the rear tires under braking. I I have to think that that. That although Yun Von has some of the best driver talent in the series, there's not very many people who would argue that. I think that vehicle is just not built quite to the level it needs to be. Now look back a little farther. This is Kazu Belly. And again, Dino Prime, he's caught him once again. This continues to be one of the more interesting battles on the circuit right now. For fifth position. A little bit farther back, and you have Rockmaro, who's basically all by himself right now in that Lamborghini. Then TJ and Ferrari boss fighting for 8th and ninth position right now. And that 4GT just very, very solid and smooth in the infield sections. But it doesn't really matter because basically everything else that's not another 4GT just pulls away in the straights. And Ferrari actually makes a little bit of a mistake there. Not a terrible one, but... A little bit. Then farther back, there's the other Ford GT, Ludicrous Speed. Is he's going to end up losing ground to Rockmaro? Wait. And then 11th back here is PM221. He has made a stop, and it's going to drop him close to the back of the field. And Drift King, this is the really unexpected one. We honestly expected to see a lot more out of Drift King. The Lamborghini program we saw last year really suited him very well. Strange to see him not able to make that thing work quite on the level we anticipated. And then just behind Drift King, you have the bearded guy. He was running up near the front early on, but got involved with a little spat with Icy Jack, and since then he's basically been stuck here in the back of the field. Again, we go back and watch this little battle here going on. The gap between first and second is about 3.6 seconds at the moment. So it doesn't seem like right now Foxy is in a position to outright catch draggers. But it is possible that like what we saw at Lime Rock, or like what we saw at the first half of Bathurst, Foxy might get into a rhythm, flip that switch, and start putting down some massive laps here. And then again, look a little farther back to this battle here between Ferrari Boss and TJ. This time it looks like TJ has been a little bit more solid in the infield section. He's going to end up staying ahead of Ferrari Boss. We're seeing the gap starting to really form across the field now. But there is still a battle going on for the final step on the podium. 
And it actually looks like Yunma has actually gotten backed by Excursoro somehow. But you can see that Mercedes-Benz, it's been so trimmed out. It seems to be able to just outright blow by anyone on the straights. The problem is, he just doesn't seem to have quite the stability needed to maintain that hot, those positions. As you see, he's really having that car slide out under him. Neither of these cars optimally set up, it seems, around the circuit here. And I think someone may have lagged out considering I'm stuck in the loading screen now. The bearded guy is painting right now in the 12th position. And it seems like it's Drift King, last season's Monza winner, who has dropped out of the event. We're going to see if we can talk to him and see what went wrong for him. Very strange to see him suddenly drop out, although he was in the back of the field. But currently, Yenvon holds that spot over Excursoro here. So we believe it's a lag incident that's probably dropped him out of the event. That's what we're hearing from officials, at least. All right, so actually we're getting word that apparently he left due to significant handling issues, said that Apparently he thought his car was not properly suited for the circuit. I'm very loosely quote, very loosely paraphrasing. Like I'm not trying to quote him word for word or anything. But apparently those are the reasons he's left right now. So once again, as we continue to watch this little battle for third and fourth, but I'm interested in this battle for fifth also. In fact, we're going to go ahead and ride on board with Dino Prime for a lap here around the Daytona 24-hour circuit. All right, and that's a lap at Daytona on board with Dino Prime as he makes a move on the outside to Cazabelli, and they're braking going through turn one. Now you can run as wide as you want to turn one in today's event. Those rules were set in place a few days before coming here. That way no one has to worry about trying to abusively follow Forza track limits and worrying about getting penalized. So any situation where drivers have a little bit more freedom in their hands, I would say at least, is a good scenario. You see Dial Prime getting nice and racy with Kazubelli as they head through the infield section right now. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and look back at that little spat between third and fourth. And actually, it's opened up a little bit more between Yunvan and Excursoro. Jan Vons opened a, not a massive gap, but a, a noteworthy one at least on a Silsero. 
Next, Ghost Row, he's really kind of chopping that Mercedes on entry into the bus stop chicane, trying to do whatever he can to maximize straight line speed. Now he's caught Yumbon's draft on the straight. And we know that Mercedes-Benz is really trimmed out for just pure speed. So if he's going to make a move, he's probably going to be able to do it here. He's going to look to the inside. This is it. This is that for that third position here. So we have two battles we're following on the track. The battle for third and the battle for fifth. And it looks like Excolzero again is able to position that Mercedes-Benz up there. So now the question is, we didn't really see the Mercedes-Benz utilized basically at all last season in the IES CGT Series. There were, it was used occasionally by drivers who were in the back of the field. Uh, I believe Ferrari bus drivers who was, he was in the back of the field and he was just constantly cycling through cars trying to get something to work. But we never really saw a whole lot of results. Now we've come here to this season. Bam! Wins with Foxy Gaming at Bathurst. Bam! Wins with Foxy Gaming at Catalonia. Bam! Wins with Foxy Gaming at Lime Rock. Granted, uh, it wasn't the strongest car at Lime Rock, but still easily a top, probably a top three car. Now we come here and bam, it's a top three contender here at Daytona. And you have to wonder, outside of Foxy Gaming for those first three races, there's not really been anyone else who's really been representing the Mercedes-Benz brand. The question is, is it the car? Is the car just very well suited and no one's been able to figure it out? Or is it just Foxy Gaming who was able to drive this decent car up to a very high result? I'll say this, Foxy Gaming, he is currently running ahead of the car he used to run with, but we also know that Excolstro doesn't quite have that car trimmed out in a perfect scenario right now. And right now, actually, we're seeing him and Yunbon continuing the battle. The draft really is... So it's going to be really interesting to see going forward, because up in the, also, speaking of which, we're going to take a brief step away from this battle and look at Foxy Gaming, who's now fallen to five seconds off of our leader. Foxy, he's been basically unstoppable when you gets out front so it, the only real exception to that is we had a yellow flag at Bathurst and then Jacob Varble was able to take a fight right to him and was basically able to hound him for almost the entire final half of the event but even then Foxy never really lost the lead as much as he was just trying to constantly defend it this is the first time we've seen outright weakness from Foxy at one point we saw him all the way down to fifth position on the initial start and then he's gotten snookered under green flag stops also and has actually lost time since i have to wonder maybe it was just it's a very very good car a very very good driver you put the two together and that's what gets you those great results kind of like you take the mp44 and you take elaine prost or ayrton senna and bam it seems to be like the, it's the greatest car in the field which obviously it is but at the same time you have two of the greatest drivers in the field driving it so Going back one more time, we're going to look at the battle for fifth and sixth here, and they're neck and neck as they go through Speedway turn two here. Kazubelli has the inside lane, a little bit more preference, but Dino's going to have the run coming off of turn two on the outside. That is the one advantage to Ray on the high side is when you come out of turn two primarily. It's night, it's a downhill run almost, and you have that extra little pull of gravity, so you get a little bit extra speed, and Dow Prime was able to make that work, put himself in position where he was ahead of Kazubelli in the next corner. In fact, Dino Prime, as I'm looking here around the circuit, I think he's the only person on the track who's using that outside lane to maximize that straight line speed. Almost everyone else seems to be trying to work draft. And Kazubelli just... I don't know if he understands why Dino's doing this and just decides that running the inside lane, the faster lane, is better. Or what? But he's not following Dino Prime's footsteps in the straightaways. He's holding on to that inside line while Dino's utilizing the outside one. It's kind of an interesting dichotomy going on there. And then once again, we'll look at that battle for third and fourth. As we're coming down here to the closing laps of this event. Both the battle for fifth and sixth and battle for third and fourth have been absolutely fantastic to watch. And the gap and basically I've been watching the ticker. I've not really seen a whole lot of other battles showing up 
at least not when it comes to based on the time. And once again, Young Von's in front of Excolstro, but Excolstro, you know that Mercedes Benz has more speed. And the draft is so important, makes a little bit of a contact there on the back end of that Lamborghini. Neck and neck, and this time it's Excolstro who's going to go up in front as they go through the bus stop chicane once again here. This time it's Yunvon, though. He's going to look to the high side, and he's going to fall right back in line, though. Lap 27 to 30. It says 28 to 31, I know, but realistically it's lap 27 to 30. Boxing Gaming has fallen to about five se It's still about five seconds solid between first and second. And Excolstro steps out wide through one but not enough to where Yunvon's able to make a move. Not yet, at least. And then once again, we look farther back between 5th and 6th. Actually, it looks like Dino's opening that gap up between himself and Kazubeli. So Dino may have found the lane that works here at Daytona in the straightaway sec- in the- well, not outright straightaway sections, but in the speedway turns that might be giving him a little bit more momentum and enabling him to pull away. However, with that said, the gap between himself and fifth, and then that battle for third and fourth, 13.8 seconds. So, despite having one of the better cars and actually being able to lead a few laps in the midpoint of the event, it looks like fifth is going to be the highest dyno finishes, assuming no one up front lags out. And then we look back in our battle for third and fourth, Yunvon's caught right up to the rear bumper of Excolstro here. Down the back straightaway once again, and they're going to go breaking into the bus stop chicane. This is where we're seeing a lot of the moves these two drivers are pulling. This is where they're happening at. Yunbon trying to take a nice straight line through entry. That rear tire is though. They step out just a little bit on him on exit, and he is only as close to Excolstro this time as he was prior, but he's got the draft. He's got the draft. He's right on Excolstro. They're both hugging that double yellow line. Boxy Game has fallen to five and a half seconds off of our leader now. As we're currently at three to go. Uh, Skullstro. Had a little bit of an issue putting the traction on the road. Here comes Yunvon. He's going to try muscle his way through. They're going to go through this high-speed section, and Yunvon is going to be able to get through. Excelstro pulls out, but he doesn't want to run the risk of trying to run side-by-side -side there. End up running through the grass and losing any chance of taking that podium position. So one step on the podium is still very much up for grabs. The gap for 5th and 6th, it looks like Dial Prime has outright won that battle. The gap is now stepped to about 2 seconds. And nearly every other battle in the field has at least a one second gap, if not larger. So right now, this is the real significant battle. And both of these cars have enough speed. And I'm going to guess to some extent enough drag that whoever ends up behind can catch on to that little bit of a draft. And will suck right up to the guy in front. Especially if the leader, like Yunbon did there, makes a mistake going through the bus stop chicane. Now, Yunvon made a mistake, and Excolstro caught right up, but had to back out of it to avoid running into the back of that Lamborghini. Now, so he's closer, but it still hurt that momentum through the bus up chicane just a bit. We're down to two laps to go right now. And there may be something wrong with our leader. Because the gap between first and second, it was at five seconds. It's now, when I last looked, it said one and a half seconds. As we go ahead and look at the telemetry for the damage, those front tires turning orange are at 60%. The fuel's at 13. He should be able to make it to the end. But I don't know if he went off circuit or Foxy Gaming just all of a sudden put down some mad flyer laps and I wasn't paying attention. But the gap, I believe, has closed, if I saw it right. Oh, wait. There's no way the gap is a full minute. 
There is no way. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Is the gap a full minute? No, the gap's not a full minute. It's a second or something. I didn't say it was a minute. That's weird. A little farther back in the field. Just going to take a real quick look at this battle back here. Between Ferrari Boss and TJ. Not really an outright battle. It's more just a situation of Ferrari Boss trying to see if TJ will make a mistake. And then if he can really capitalize on it. And as we'll get on to the straightaway here. We expect TJ to once again pull away. Anyways, looking back at our leader, though, Dragon's X Ferrari, he's going to come down, take the white flag here at Daytona. Now, he is going to come up on lap traffic here on this lap, so it's going to be a question on if the bearded guy is actually going to hold up anything. Draggers runs wide going through turn one there. A little bit of a choke. It's coming really late in the race, and that lead is going to dribble away, but I expect there's enough still that he'll be able to make it home if he doesn't make too many mistakes here. 3.9 seconds between first and second. So Foxy seems to have dropped off again. The gap between fifth and sixth is now four seconds. This is the battle, though, between third and fourth that everyone's still wondering about. The final step on the podium. Yumbon's got it. Excolster Royal wants it. I don't think Excolster is American. In fact, I think if Excolster Royal can get by Yumbon. It would make it a all-European top three, which is something I don't think we've ever had in the series. So that would be a very unique scenario. Skullstro sliding those rear tires. Is it coming to the straightaway section? Up front, Dragon's X Ferrari. He's going to go through the bus stop chicane. Boxy Gaming is three seconds off. Yunvon and Skullstro even farther back. There's a little bit of a gap between third and fourth. Yunvon needs to not make a mistake. And he may be able to hold on to that third spot. Skullstro closes right on. They both cut through the dirt just a bit there. He's going to cut through the dirt again on exit. Up front, Dragon's X Ferrari is going to come home out of the final corner. Dragon's X Ferrari is going to be the first driver not named Foxy and not driving Mercedes Benz to win. Foxy Gaming is going to take home a second place, though. And now for that battle for a third step and final step on the podium, Yunvon is going to keep Excolstro right behind him. Excolstro is going to look wide. Wow, final finish for the third place position. But Excolstro was not, it says Excolstro got it. We're going to have to go back and look at the footage to see. But from what I saw, it looked like Yunvon got it. Fifth place is going to be Dino Prime. Sixth place is going to be Kazu Belly. Seventh is going to be TJ. If he doesn't make a mistake here, but it's all straight away here. I don't expect he's going to lose time to Ferrari, boss. So TJ is going to take third. I'm sorry, TJ. Oh, TJ actually rolls his Chevy GT past the line. So we're getting word that apparently Yunvon, although he edged Excolstro at the end, he's going to be penalized post-race. I'm guessing the penalty was due to blocking or something. We have yet to get word on that. Luke Crispy is going to finish 9th. 10th is going to go to Rock Morrow. 11th is going to go to PM221. 12th, and the last car still on the circuit, should be the bearded guy, who we're not going to get to see him. Finish up, but Dragon's X Ferrari is going to take home preseason victory number one. And we're going to go ahead and try to get in contact with him and bring him into, bring him on into you know the box. Let's hear what he has to say about all this. We also want to see if we can talk to Excolsoro. Also, I don't think Excolsoro is on my friend list, so I need to get him in here now before he leaves. All right, so here we are, post-race, and first we want to talk to our race winner here at Daytona, Draggers X Ferrari. Draggers, include your audio. You uh, won. What do you have to say? This is a good race, that was. Surprisingly good for the track. Well, yeah, I'm got the thing, surprisingly. I did think it was going to be on the threat from Vaughn. 
and definitely Kane. Kane had some serious pace going to the start. And I'm um, so foxy, but sort of it evened itself out. I started pulling away that a little bit, and that got me the first place. Was that strategy of pitting significantly earlier than your rivals on track, how much did that play into you inheriting the lead at the end? I think I will have got, no matter where I pit it, I think I will have got it based on pure pace. But I just, I just want to get it out of the way early, so I had free traffic. But I did the calculations literally five seconds before I dove in. I was like, yeah, I can do this. I just, I just turn left and, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on your victory. Also, congratulations on being the first guy to bring something that's not in a Mercedes into victory lane also. So that's kind of an impressive thing on its own. <laughs> <laughs> like, and the beam uh. is built for this track. It's built for this track and Le Mans and nothing else. Everywhere else it is shocking. So that's why I'm going back to the Viper in the actual season. Ah, uh, all right. Well, now, now that you have this, going into the season opening event at Daytona in two weeks where points will actually get paid out, do you think you're going to stick with this car for the event or do you think you're going to go back to the Viper? As you know, this, you're not going to, drivers aren't allowed to swap cars as often as they did last year. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I'm gonna go on the Viper just so I get a better like performance the entire entire thing. Instead of having a definite chance to get top points in this one, I'm just gonna go for the even spread and just rack them up slowly and slowly instead of getting one good one and then being up seventh, eighth, ninth, and all that whatnot. Because the Beamer's got no pace. <laughs> All right, well, you heard it here, folks. That's Drag6 Ferrari. Anything else you want to say before we peace out and go to our next drivers? My tune was a bit too good. That's, yeah. <laughs> Shut All up. All right, well, you heard it there. Now we want to go ahead and talk to our second place finisher, Foxy. Foxy, uh, I'm going to be honest, this is kind of weird. I'm used to normally seeing you on the top step of the podium covered in champagne and confetti. Uh... What happened? <laughs> uh, no, nothing happened. It, so we've, we've been having a bit of talk. So apparently, uh, me with the Mercedes combination was just a bit too fast. So uh, because you're bad, we've, uh, swapped to we've swapped to the Porsche, the 2011 one, for the full season. Um, but just wanted to use something a little bit different for this final preseason racing than this, and because I, I just like this car. Uh, but no, I'm happy with second. I know the, this isn't an ideal track for the Nissan. Uh, it's not got the same straight line speed as some of the some of the other cars like the Corvette, the Mercedes, the BMW. But it's it's still decent enough to be all right around here. So, you know, it's 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 a, it's still a good result, and I'm still confident going into the season with the Porsche. And you say you're going to be using the 2011 Porsche, right? Yes. All right, that'll be interesting to see still the making competitive, 2011 Porsche. Worry. Yeah, it still was a very competitive car. That was one of the vehicles PM used during his run in a run at trying to get the championship at least last season. So it'll be interesting to see what you can do in that car, considering that car did go to victory lane twice last year. Uh, anything else you want to say about this event in general? Well, I, I know that... Uh... Well, round one of the actual championships at Daytona as well. The Porsche won't be as strong as the Nissan there, but uh, other than that, it's it's looking good, especially after the three wins in preseason. So definitely some positives going into the into the season. All right, well you're here, you're here folks. It's a second place finisher, and despite Cross giving there. Mercedes Benz a very strong run oh, up at the front early on. <laughs> He's going to be moving on to You're Porsche, a different question, German manufacturer going on <laughs> into the actual points pain area. Now we're going to go ahead and talk to our third and fourth place finishers, Jan Von and Skolstro. This is probably going to be extremely no controversial. One can say right. oh. <laughs> so, first up, I was watching you guys coming down to the line. Jan Von, you were out in front, and coming down to the line. Skullstro, I'm just going to call you Kane because I know your actual name is Kane. Kane, I saw you make that move to the outside, bring it down to just a foot maybe, at, e at least half a meter between the two of you at the line, but you lost out, but it's not going to matter because in post-race, apparently Yunbon's being penalized. We're not being told why yet. 
But Yum Bomb was penalized, and that spot is being given to you, Kane. So, in general, what's your guys' opinion on the race and that little finish between you guys as a whole? It's uh, quite a nice battle, instead of everyone just running off. <laughs> like, there were a couple of times when, um, I think the first corner, I fucking hate it. By the way, I'm sorry when I, like, literally, like, my car just came. That's all cool. I hate it, yeah. But, um... Dude, all head was actually battling through half of the race because I think I pitted at lap 16, 18, something like that. And we were basically battling the whole time. And it was really, it was a really nice battle. We were just going back and forth, switch positions the whole time, clean racing. Sometimes we'll bump heads, you know, just little, little bumps and scraping going on. But I mean, it was a cool battle. It was really a good race, though. And um, I gave grass to him, even though I, I got a penalty. If, it is preseason. I'm not really too worried about it, but um, good race to you, buddy. Just hope hey, that I can actually, hopefully I can actually stand up for the race like that. All right, so going into the actual points paying series, do you think either you guys are gonna stick with the cars that you ran with here today? I'm not 100% sure. I might go back to the vibe. Yeah. I'll probably do some more testing on the off season. Just see what suits me. Yeah, uh, I'm, I, I got my other two choices. It's either this Lambo, my Beamer, or my Jet. I'm sticking with yeah, the car V6 vacuum, yeah. ride or die. All right, anything else you two want to say before we head out and go interview some of our lower-placing drivers here? Uh, no, good race, man. Yeah, bye. Also, uh, just really quick, just to make sure, uh, Excelsior, you're not American, are you? You're from... No. He's a foreigner! You're from... <laughs> no, I don't... I'm from I just, the I don't want to be wrong. Place. You're from... I just don't... I just want to make sure I'm not screwing this up. You're from He's Britain, from the Kingdom of is United. Okay, yeah, so you're from also United Kingdom. Draggers is from United Kingdom. Foxy, where are you from, if you're still here? Scotland. United Kingdom. Yeah, Scotland. Okay, so... I'm paying some more than... In a, so basically the British Isles end yeah, up the taking Tons home the top here. three at Daytona. <laughs> so for the first time, it's a, all as a nationality oh, that sweeps the podium. <laughs> That's not the United States, so it's going to be very interesting going forward. <laughs> you can a little bit stronger you representation. Yes. <laughs> Alright, oh so anyways, God, we're going to go ahead and start looking down a little farther down the field. So, uh, in... That's weird, the game says that Dino finished 8th. No, it's not. Dino Prime, I know you're in here. Are you going to actually speak for an interview, or do you want us to just skip over you? He said he would. He won Daytona and NX1 CS, and he still copped out on us. Well, the more you say that, I, I'm, I'm going. Like, I'm, I'm just going to give him the chance. If he doesn't actually want to speak, I'm not going to try and force him to speak. If he does, so. this whole party's going to erupt. <laughs> I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for. Yeah. Anyway, about the race. <laughs> Skip. I'll do something All right. else right now. All right. Well, that's that. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can talk to. I don't know why it, the. Ordering is so weird, and I wasn't able to it's get Kazubelli in here, sadly, which is kind of a shame because Dino Prime and Kazubelli had a hell of a battle for most of the event until the final few laps. <laughs> but uh, TJ in the in the Chevy, yeah, in the Chevy. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My tongue, my tongue just went. Nye, nye. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Chevy TJ, you come ho came home in the seventh position. What do you have to say about your event overall? Um. Well, I'm gonna say I was a little scared most of the time because I had a uh, two raging four GTs on my behind the hole race, and that was fun. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna tell you right now that straight line speed of this car really helped me out on those ba on that back straight, and then that's all I can really say is I was really impressed with this car and I was up there pretty high during the beginning of the race and that's all I can really ask for. So in general when it comes to the actual season are you going to this vehicle or are you going to go and jump into something else when we actually start awarding points? If I do get the opportunity to use this car in the series I'm taking us. Right. 
And if the opportunity does not prevent, present itself, what are you going to run? That will uh, be determined. That's to be, to be announced. All right. Well, you heard it here, folks. That's from TK, the highest finisher from Rebel Racing. Now we want to go ahead and talk to the two Ford GT drivers. Go ahead, you guys. What was your race like in general? Absolutely shit. Weird. Oh wow! Very nice. Two extremes okay. there. Two varying extremes. Um. Well, Rod, considering I'm the most stable of us two at the moment, I guess I'll go first. Best. Um, <laughs> Best. I thought I was going to be last, and then I wasn't. That's basically all I have to say. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, uh, we did good. Yeah. Right, there's boss. Nothing we could have done with the Fords, though. <laughs> like, physically nothing. We kept on. Yeah. Like, there's we'll like, say, just give it less air, and I'm like, I've run every simulation I could. I couldn't get it past this. We've seven. tried it's everything. Like it's a wall. I have. So, it's like, it's just a wall of 170 whatever mile an hour so we were kind of just fucked there so we're just gonna wait out both the Daytona events and kick it back up again when lime or uh, not lime rock uh long beach the other l track comes around <laughs> all right so do you guys by chance may have like some alternate strategy maybe like pit wise or something like that you think might be able to get you guys like a few extra points position Probably. At the end of Daytona, or just I just want to say this right now, out. for the record, um, we make everything up on the fly, so there's no, there's nothing we go with, and we kind of do this bitch as it goes along. So, I mean, Avery, I'm actually taking this seriously. I mean, I am too. It's just I don't fucking have big brain power, so I'm just kind of doing what I see. Tax of one phone equals two phones. All right, well, you heard it here, folks. That's the word from Ferrari boss and Lucas Speed from the Ford GT camp. Anything else you two want to say before we go on and try to talk to other drivers here? You're going to fucking ask us you're going to stick in the car. Fuck yeah, we're going to stick in the car. It's a V6 vacuum sucking up dust for life, bitch boy. <laughs> hey, who really is <laughs> on the streets? <laughs> All right, so go ahead. We're going to go ahead and talk to the other Suck Raven West life. driver, Rock Morrow, driving the Lamborghini here today. And Rock... Lambo had a good run up front. It got a fourth in the end results, but it wasn't yours. What went on there? Um, so the sweeping, so the sweeping left-hander coming into the, uh, not coming into, but in the middle of the road section that uh, you could take flat out. I ran, I came out too wide, got caught up in the grass, which sent me barreling into the tire wall three times. Um, within the span of around, I'd say, 8 to 10 laps or so. So I dropped from coming out of the pits in running in 7th place, 6th place or so, to having to come out and gain ground on PM and overtake him for 10th place at the end of the race. Other than that, I'm happy with the way it ran because it was a great car, and I may even consider running that for the season. It was fun to drive. All right, uh, anything else in general you want to say before we go up? Uh, I think actually the last guy who we've not interviewed, who, yeah, I think everyone Isn't else here. is just not in the party, so, yeah. yeah I'm sad. Like, I tried to I, get Cazabelli. I'm going to try and get Cazabelli. Yeah. Yeah. PM. I'm it, was an an it was an enjoyable race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, well, that seems to be everyone that we have been able to get in contact with. I'm going to try one more time, see if I can get... Through, through to Kazu Belly. Worst case scenario, I can't. Uh, Try and get Pam as well. Kazu Belly. All right, I'll shoot it. I'll shoot him an invite. Also, give me just a sec. Invite to party. It could just be an issue where I, they've just not gotten the invites yet or not. But that's very, that's very possible also. So. All right, but anyways, uh, assuming the two of them don't come in, we want to go ahead real quickly, talk to our series host, Coca Gamer. Coca, so first race with penalties and stated. Do you think there's going to be any significant changes to the current penalty system or what to the actual series? Um, I will say I'm going to try to use time penalties more often, as in like what happened to Young Vaughn with him being penalized for half a second. But um, 
I, I do think um, that the penalties were fine. Um, it's just that most of the incidents that happened that were controversial is stuff I didn't see. And if people recorded it, like that would have been perfect so I could view it, view the clips and make penalties based off that. I just, I was trying to switch back since there's a four second delay between the real race and the broadcast or the, the spectator mode. I, I thought I would be able to switch back to whoever cars and uh, whatever cars are involved to see what the incident is. Uh, however, I, I couldn't get back there in time, so um, I wish I did. But uh, the penalty system seems to be doing okay. Um, as you know, we have a full season ahead of us, so I mean, changes could go on along the way. Um, but really, today's race was actually really good. Um, it was better than I, I kind of expected it to be. Um, with it being last year, last year it just didn't feel uh, like a great race, but um, it, it it really was this year, and I'm I'm kind of proud of it. Fifteen drivers was also something I was proud of having, uh, or sorry, fourteen drivers in the race, which was a uh, all-time high. However, I'm planning on having more people showing up for the actual regular season race, so hopefully it it get it just keeps getting better. But yeah. All right, that's the word. Uh, finally, what was it that Jan Vong got penalized for in the end? Okay, so um, going, I think it was two laps to go, Young Vaughn sort of slammed into or pushed into Exulcero under, or sorry, Kane under braking in turn one, pushing him out of the way, pushing Kane out of the way, giving Young Vaughn the position. Um, and at that point, I thought it was clear that we should give him a penalty for that. And so I did, and that's why he got it. So. There are ways he could have avoided it, though. I think he could have. It's a big old yeah. bitch. I need to stop. Yeah. I, I get it. It's a Lamborghini. It's heavy. So. Yep. All right. Well, that's. <laughs> yeah. That's an I or when I see just dive bombed on the bearded on guy going into turn one, also. Oh my god, I saw that. I saw that arrow behind me. I saw an arrow move past me at supersonic speed. I'm like, I'm gonna get no break. And I just look behind me, and there's bearded guy. Whoop, gone. <laughs> All right. Well, that seems to be it thus far. So until next time, which. Again, just want to make sure we're getting it straight. In two weeks, on May the 31st, is anticipated for the first actual points paying event at the series, which will be at Daytona um, on the 9th, right? Um, yeah, so I'm planning on having it on May 31st, but it may or may not be rescheduled. Whoa, just bones. putting that out there because of my real-life racing. So, I mean... All right, uh, well, you heard it here, folks. Plan on the next event, the first points paint event of the second season of the IASC GT Series coming at you in two weeks. Until that time, though, I have been Sane Lear 13 here. This has been the IESC GT Series at Daytona for their final preseason race. We want to thank you very much for joining us here today. I'm a buck. I'm a gum. I'll see you.